Welcome to the news with Hindi TV. It's Wednesday, July 10th. Coming up in today's episode, the Mumbai hit and run accused sent to 7 days police custody. Supreme Court rules Muslim women deserve alimony under gender and religion neutral laws, superseding personal law boards. Bengal government's plea against center is valid, Supreme Court ruled today. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is disappointed in Prime Minister Modi. First up, Mihir Shah, the main accused in the Mumbai BMW hit-and-run case, has been sent to police custody till July 16th. He is the son of a now-suspended Shiv Sena leader, Rajesh Shah, and was arrested yesterday evening after being on the run for police for 72 hours. A little background of the case. On Sunday morning, Mihir, allegedly under the influence of alcohol, drove into a scooty or a two-wheeler, hitting a couple. He then carried on with his speedy vehicle, dragging the woman underneath the car for over one and a half kilometers, and it is alleged that he even reversed the car over the victim's body. He was missing for three days and authorities could not track him until last evening. During his court hearing today, the prosecution argued that he was not cooperating and he had cut his hair and beard to evade the authorities after the accident. Sources told NDTV that his girlfriend could also be detained, as they say he called her dozens of times on Sunday morning after hitting the couple on the bike and killing the 45-year-old woman. The prosecution pushed for a long custody as they claim many questions remain unanswered, such as what happened to the number plate, who sheltered the accused, what was the role of his mother and two sisters, and how many were involved in erasing evidence. Notably, a total of 12 people have been taken into custody so far. His father was taken into custody on Sunday evening but caught bail within 24 hours. His father and the family driver who still remains in jail are accused of taking the car from Mihir sometime after the accident and Mihir was instructed to go to their home in Goregaon in an auto rickshaw. They are then accused of trying to erase evidence from the car which include removing the Shiv Sena sticker from the luxury vehicle and even removing the license plate. It is also alleged the father had asked the driver to give the keys to the allegedly drunk son when he wanted a joyride on Marine Drive after his party with five friends sometime around midnight. Sources have told NTTV that Mihir has admitted to driving the vehicle when it rammed into the couple in which the wife died and the husband was injured. However, sources reveal that Mihir has denied that he was drunk despite being seen in CCTV footage of the bar in Juhu where he and his friends raked up a bill of over 18,000, a bill that was seen by NDTV. Meanwhile, the bar in Juhu which served alcohol to a 24-year-old Mihir, which happens to be underage in the state of Maharashtra, has been demolished by city officials. Shiv Sena UBT leader Aditya Thakre has asked why there is no bulldozer justice for the accused in this case while it was there for the bar and has been happening across states multiple times. He also alleged that it was not a hit and run but a murder. Coming down heavily against the Mahayuti government in Maharashtra, he said a fast-track punishment was needed in this case and also visited the victim's house and met with the family. He raised several questions including why the CCTV footage where the accused was seen leaving the premises of the bar was released after 60 hours. He has questioned the Home Department's role in this entire ordeal. Bulldozer justice should be served on the Shah house now, he claimed to media. Even though he said he does not want to politicize the issue, he did ask if political patronage was involved as the accused Mihir Shah's father, Rajesh Shah, was a member of Eknath Shinde's Shiv Sena, who is also the chief minister of Maharashtra. He also questioned how he was arrested after being on the run for three days and his father, who allegedly facilitated the escape, has now been suspended from Shiv Sena. And next, the time has come for Indian men to recognize the indispensable role played by homemakers in the sacrifices they make for the family, the Supreme Court said today. The observation came as a bench of Justice B.V. Nagaratna and Justice Augustine George Massey ruled that a divorced Muslim woman can seek alimony from her husband under Section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code. The bench held that law for seeking maintenance applies to all married women irrespective of their religion. The court also highlighted the role of a homemaker in a family unit and said she should be financially compensated via joint bank accounts, ATM pins and so on to ensure the family's and the woman's economic stability. 
the Supreme Court's order stating that a Muslim woman is entitled to maintenance from her husband after divorce, underline that maintenance is not charity but a fundamental right of married women. Quote, this right transcends religious boundaries, reinforcing the principle of gender equality and financial security for all married women, unquote, the court said. Background of this case is a petition by Muhammad Abdul Samad, who was directed by a family court to pay a monthly allowance of Rs 20,000 to his divorced wife. Mr. Samad had challenged the direction in Telangana High Court, which modified the amount to Rs 10,000. He then moved the Supreme Court. His counsel argued that divorced Muslim women can seek recourse to the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Divorce Act of 1986. They also stress that it provides much more than Section 125 of CRPC. They also argued that special law shall prevail over a general law, a request that the Supreme Court denied. And next, in a relief for the Bengal government, the Supreme Court of India ruled that the state's objection to the centre ordering CBI investigations of Bengal cases without the state's consent is valid. The Bengal government had approached the Supreme Court against CBI filing cases despite the state withdrawing its general consent to the central agency in 2018. The Bengal government has been at loggerheads with the centre over a multitude of issues this year, most infamously the Sandesh Khali case, and centre had argued the state's petition was not maintainable. In the court ruling of today, Delhi Special Police Establishment Act played a key role. According to Section 6 of the DSPE Act 1946, the CBI must obtain consent from respective state governments to conduct investigations in their jurisdiction. The DSP Act provides immunity from the centre's power, the court added. The CBI is currently probing multiple charges of sexual assault, land grabbing and ration scam against Shah Jahan Sheikh, a former Trinamul leader and local strongman, and his aides in Bengal's Sandesh Khali. The Bengal government had opposed the Calcutta High Court's CBI probe into the case. Allowing the CBI to continue its probe on Monday, the Supreme Court had wondered why the Bengal government was interested in protecting an individual. Breaking from breaking news, Nicholas Cruz, the Florida mass shooter, has agreed to donate his brain to science as a part of a unique civil settlement according to court documents and experts. Cruz used an assault rifle to kill 17 students and staff members at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland on February 14, 2018, one of the deadliest mass shootings in US history. The settlement was proposed by the attorney of one of the victims who was shot five times. Quote, I figured if scientists studied his brain, they might be able to figure out what created this monster. The lawyer told Fox News Digital, adding maybe there was some kind of imbalance that caused this and how they can prevent it in the future. Now, back to news. As United States claimed PM Modi can convince Russia to end the war in Ukraine, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has expressed disappointment in the Indian Prime Minister. Reacting sharply to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's brief visit to Russia and his interaction with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Zelensky posted on X, and I quote, In Ukraine today, 37 people were killed, three of whom were children, 170 were injured, including 13 children, as a result of Russia's brutal missile strike, unquote. He added a Russian missile had struck the largest children's hospital in Ukraine and targeted young cancer patients and that many were still buried under the rubble. Quote, It is a huge disappointment and a devastating blow to peace efforts to see the leader of the world's largest democracy hug the world's most bloody criminal in Moscow on such a day. Unquote. While India has been on a neutral position urging both sides for peace, India's relations with Russia, especially buying fuel, and being cordial with the president, while the West has imposed sanctions on the country, remains a thorn in Ukraine's perception of India. On the other hand, White House spokesperson Karine Jean-Pierre said on Tuesday that India's relationship with Russia gives it an ability to urge President Vladimir Putin to end the war with Ukraine. 
Jean Pierre made this remarks after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi told Putin that the death of innocent children was painful and terrifying a day after the lethal strike on children's hospital in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv sources have told NDTV that Prime Minister Modi told the Russian president that conflict should be resolved with dialogue not war and lastly the gentleman of cricket rahul dravid has given another fine example of his character deciding to let go of half of the 5 crore prize money that he was to get from the pool of rupees 125 crore that bcci announced for t20 world cup winning indian team other coaches were allotted rupees 2.5 crore while dravid got 5 crore in his share according to a report in hindustan times dravid asked the board to reduce his cash award to rupees 2.5 crore as he did not want to get more money in comparison to the batting bowling and fielding coaches a lovely gift from the outgoing coach for sure that's all for today you were listening to the news with nd tv your daily news paper and tv news bulletin wrapped in a compact podcast if you want to catch up with the days events in a hurry do remember to subscribe to the news with nd tv on apple spotify and the nd tv news app this is your host anvithi signing off <laughs>